Hello Tesla fans. New tidbit today, uh, this time about Tesla's uh, summon features. Um, there's a hidden, somewhat indirect rumor about um, a summon restriction. Check it out. So The Verge reported recently um, that Tesla is going to be releasing an update um, to fix a what they call a safety flaw. Um, so if you want to read the article, you can just search for this title, or I'll leave a link to it in the uh, description. Or you can just listen to my brief overview. Basically, uh, Consumer Reports um, was using Summon, and they uh, thought that because the car keeps driving after you push the uh, direction button on the key fob, so once it's ready to do Summon, you hit the trunk to go backwards, or you hit the front to go forwards. And then the car just moves, and they're saying like, well, if you drop this or lose this, like, you can't stop your car until like, you know, it detects something and and stops. Which, okay, I guess that's true. So anyway, um, Tesla has said that they are going to change it so that you don't just push the button for which direction you want it to go. You ha actually have to hold it down, um, and if you lift up on the switch then the car will automatically stop and apparently that's called a dead man's switch. So to me this qualifies uh, as a pseudo restriction because one of the great things about summon is that um, from inside my house I can just use the key fob and basically tell the car like okay back out of the garage and then I'll be putting, putting on my coat or getting my wallet and other stuff or whatever while the car is backing itself out and then when I'm outside, the car's ready for me to get in, and I can drive off, at least when it works um, works well. So, but now, um, I, I, well, I say now, but it, this hasn't been released. Um, this is a possible future um, change. Um, but anyway, in that case, I would have to stand there and, like, hold this thing until the car's ready to, um, uh, ready to be stopped. There's a number of problems with that. First, with the button, like this is a good clicker button, but this is not a good hold down button. I mean, you actually have to get a pretty good grip on this thing in order to hold it down, except for the top one. The top one's fairly easy, but like the front one and the the trunk one are kind of, oops, there we go. You know, they're kind of in this angled area of the fob. So it's, it's not that comfortable to hold it down, and summon goes extremely slowly, especially if it's in the, um, in the garage. So, um, I mean, when it backs up, it'll back up a little bit, detect the garage, and then garage door, and then it will open it, and all that takes time. So if, if they make that switch, you're going to have to hold down this button like during that entire process, which could be like, I don't know. 30 seconds long or something. That's a long time. It doesn't sound like it, but that's a long time to hold down a, a button that's not super comfortable. Um, and then there's just the convenience feature. Like I said, I like to use this as um, almost like a butler service uh, where it pulls the car out um, and I don't have to worry about, you know, am I going to ding my mirrors on the way out of the garage because I'm a little groggy or something. It just pulls the car out and um, there it is in the driveway. So. I consider this a little bit of a restriction, so I'm a little I'm bummed about that, but um, we'll see if it actually gets implemented. The article does mention that a Tesla spokesperson um, has stated that they've already built a fix for it, even though it hasn't been released. So, I mean, it sounds like it's, it's going to happen, but we'll see. And um, hopefully, hopefully it, uh, I don't know, there's something they can do to actually make it completely automated again. That'd be really cool.